All right, guys, we're back on site at our carrier package unit, 25 ton package unit. If you watched my last video on this unit, it is titled, um, My Carrier Can't Breathe. This is the one where our return ductwork was never actually cut into our unit. So this ductwork right here just goes into a flat panel, which you'll see once we remove this economizer. So our plan today is to remove our economizer, cut a hole for the return air, and then uh, return proper airflow. We're gonna check our heat exchanger in this as well because it's probably been over firing and going off on thermal for the last uh, two years. And then we're also gonna basically recommission everything. We're gonna hook up our gauges, check superheat, subcooling, temperature splits, make sure our compressors are fine. Basically go through this with a fine tooth comb because for the last two years it's been struggling to survive. So that's our plan guys. Let me get this economizer removed and we'll uh, We'll show you what we plan on doing. Now that we have our economizer exposed, right here, what we found way back in this corner is this little cutout right here, this triangle is actually cut out. Now on my initial visit, I missed that because I was looking through the top and through the control panel down through my return air and looking at it from that angle, it looked like it was closed off. Now this up here, this entire section is closed off so I was kind of scratching my head as to why they would just cut out this little tiny triangle piece this is a 25 ton unit and I don't do airflow balance testing anything like that but uh, a little triangle cut out of that doesn't seem like it's gonna provide enough airflow so I believe what they did was they put everything together put the ductwork on there realized their mistake and then came back and cut this open they just cut this down here because it was the most accessible part of it. I don't believe it has anything to do with um, proper airflow balancing. So what we did is we went over to the twin to this unit which has the same exact problem and we took a static test and I was bouncing between 0.35 and 0.4 inches uh, between my return and supply. And what we eventually found our stage one compressor wasn't coming on because our low pressure switch had failed. So we attached our gauges, bypassed that low pressure switch, got it running. And right now I have a supply temp of 52 with a return of about 74. So I do have about a 20 degree split. Um, my high side pressure looks okay. My low side pressure though is a little bit lower than what I'd like. Um, we're looking at about a 35 degree evaporator, which still indicates to me that we don't have enough airflow across that evaporator. And if you watch it, it kind of, it bounces around between 32 and 35, which I'm going to chalk up to airflow at this point. Or possibly our TXV hunting. Um, I just have to uh, open up that evaporator panel and verify that I do have a TXV. I can't remember from last time I was here. But that's where we stand right now. So we still have an airflow issue that we need to correct. But we're slowly discovering a few other issues that we're working our way through. So we're going to take our time on this, guys, and look at the big picture, all right? Oh, and if you're wondering, I just have my analog gauges hooked up down here. And it was just kind of an afterthought. I just got uh, I just got this hanging here for the temperature clamp right here. We're gonna replace this low pressure switch. So once we reclaim all the charge, raise in a new switch, then I'll get my uh, digital gauges hooked up properly. All right, guys. So we got our economizer out right here, uh, right down here. If you see this lip right here, I had to cut that while the economizer is in place just to get it to come out because I wasn't able to move this corner post. See right there, we had to fight it a little bit. But you can kind of see it a little bit better. I climb right inside here. That's the little bit of airflow that we did have. So we definitely had airflow problems. It just wasn't a complete 100% blockage like I thought it was. But like I said, our, our other unit over there, the twin to this one, it's down to about 32, 34 degree evaporator. Uh, static pressure still seems to be okay, which is odd. 
but our evaporator is very, very cold. So we are going to slice that uh, the rest of that panel off with a, my sawzall right here. So let's get to work. As you can tell, we now have a proper opening. Now, we just gotta put all that back in here. So let's get that started. As you can tell, we got our economizer reassembled. I do have the metal filters left out. So we're gonna go ahead and clean those before I reinstall them. I feel like my magnetic umbrella kit. I just got that. So far it's not too bad. Don't have any complaints. The magnet's strong enough to hold it in place like that. It's not a real windy day but my concern is when there is a windy day how well it um, stays stays on a unit like that. Uh, before I turn it on and recommission the system, check my airflow and everything, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this condensing coil. It's not real bad but as I always say you don't know if it's clean until you clean it yourself. So, let's start over here. I'm going to spray it down and get as much gunk off there as I can before I uh, do a chemical soak on it. Alright, let me get after it guys. Here we are. And what I'm doing, really, I'm just trying to get as much dry stuff off I, as I can before I get my chemical on here. Get the coil nice and wet. It's going to help that chemical out a lot better. Instead of just spraying chemical onto a dry coil, I should probably get my test hose out of the way, huh? Yeah. This one's not too terrible, but if we're going to do it properly, we're going to clean it up. And as I've said before, I always like to try to spray straight down because you don't want to spray straight into the coil and push this, this gunk back into the coil. Just try to go straight down with it without so much pressure that you're going to bend the fins either.
All right, it's time to do a chemical soak. I don't know if I've touched on this before in other videos, but what I like to do is start at the bottom and kind of stack the chemical on top of itself. I seem to get better results that way. But hey, if you guys do it differently, put a comment below. I'm not sure where I picked this up at. I want to say that I heard it on HVAC our school or HVAC school. There was an episode with John Pastorelli, and uh, I believe he was talking about how to properly clean condensing coils. Now this one I got just a uh, lower ratio. I think it's a six to one ratio because. It's not very dirty, so we don't need full concentrate. Just enough to break up whatever gunk's on the inside and get it to fall down. Looks like I almost need to refill this stuff. All right, guys, let me grab a refill real quick. All right, we just got our coils cleaned up, guys. One thing, I can't state this enough. If you're gonna go through the trouble of cleaning coils, Go through the trouble of washing away all the crap that you clean off the coils and anything around the coils. Once that water dries, obviously all that stuff's going to get sucked right back onto the coil. So, just get it out of there. If not, what's the purpose of cleaning the coils? Just a common sense tip right there, alright? Here's our blower compartment. I initially thought there was a way I could take this entire blower section and slide it out, almost like a Lennox. However, that's not really the case here, so I still want to get eyes on my heat exchanger. So what I'm going to end up doing is uh, just going in through my supply vent and seeing if I can't get my endoscope in there and getting some, uh, some pictures of that heat exchanger, just to make sure it's not all burnt up and rusted out and everything. So. Let me go pop a hole in the supply vent and we'll try that out. Alright guys, so our coil is nice and dry. We're back up and running. We're in two-stage cooling right now. Let's check out my return air temperature is 80. My supply is 55. We started off with a return air temperature about 86, so it's coming down. My static pressure is kind of bounced around between 0.5 and 0.6. I'm not too concerned about that. I was able to get a, a little bit of a peek at my uh, heat exchanger right there. Right where you see that 3M tape. I went inside there with my little endoscope and I uh, just basically checked out the tubing on it. It looks pretty good. It's not all burnt up. So let's come over here, check out our pressures, about 116 on the low side, 324 on the high side. We got an evaporator of about 39. Uh, condensing temperature about 100. I'm measuring 84 ambient in the shade, or 83, I take that back, 83. So I don't really have my 20-25 degree split like I like to see on these 410 units. It's a newer unit, so the newer units, my rule of thumb is usually 20-25 degree split. But um, it might be closer to 20 on this unit. Now I did let that condenser dry as best I could. We may have a lower condensing temperature because there might have been some water trapped inside. I don't have a leaf blower to go ahead and clean it or uh, dry it off before I started it back up. But once we get all that water off there, our condensing temperature will probably climb up just a little bit. 
In a minute here, I'm going to connect my I'm going to connect one of my gauges to my discharge side, and I'm going to use that chart right back there just to check our charge real quick. But right now, everything looks looks really good, so I have no concerns at this moment. If you guys can hear me, our discharge pressure is 343. 344. It's kind of been bouncing around 345 to 350. So if we come over here on our chart, you'll see I have it marked off at 350. Our refrigerant temperature leaving the condenser is 80, 181. I have that marked off at 80. So if you just come over here, scroll down, we're borderline overcharged according to this. But at the same time, we are still under a heavy load because I'm still pulling back 82 degree return air. So since we're pulling back such hot return air and we're so close to right where it should be as, as far as that charging chart goes, I'm not going to do anything with the charge. I'm going to leave it the way it is. We're just going to let this thing run for a little while get down to temperature and then we're gonna start on that unit over there doing the same thing all right let me get this mess cleaned up and transfer all this stuff over to the unit down there all right guys we're down to 77 return got about a 53 supply my static is about 0 0.5 0 0.6 Check our airflow. Airflow is good. Let's see, is that about 200 CFMs? Yeah, look at that. It's about 200 CFMs right there. All right, so I wanted to take a minute and just quickly recap that job we had today. I know footage was kind of all over the place. It was a little bit of a hectic job site today. I had uh, maintenance guys and another technician with me, so it was uh, a little bit of hit or miss. But I tried to get all the important stuff on film and narrate it as best I could for you guys. Um, so as you could tell, when we first got that economizer out, we found that there was a little triangle portion that was cut out underneath that, uh, that economizer. Now, I couldn't really figure out why that uh, only that little section was cut out. I kind of gave the contractor who installed it the benefit of the doubt and assumed that he had balanced the air in a way that um, that return air was just enough, that they had enough outside air mixing with the uh, little bit of return that they had coming through there. Um, I know it's kind of far-fetched, but... Uh, once I looked through the economizer and found that the economizer is basically set to its minimum position, unless it's calling for free cooling, um, I decided that probably wasn't the case. So what I believe happened is that they got everything done, and then they realized their mistake. After everything was put together, the ductwork was installed, they realized that they forgot to cut a opening for the return air, and then since that economizer is such a bear to get out of there, what they did is they came back and they just you know, cut that little section out because it was easiest to do. Um, so, that's what I think happened. But, um, yeah, so anyway, we pulled that out, cut it open, got proper return air, as you've seen. Um, everything after that was, was just great. I would have liked to get a better view of the heat exchanger. I did have my little boroscope, endoscope, whatever you want to call it, inside the supply vent. I, I was able to see the tubing on the heat exchanger, and it looked fine. But um, I kind of wanted to get a better view of it, but I just I just couldn't without cutting into the ductwork or removing the ductwork or gutting the middle part of the machine to remove the blower and everything. So that just wasn't really an option. But uh, as you can tell, everything looks good on that. Pressures were good, superheat, subcooling, everything was good. Um, we did just satisfy at 72 degrees about 15 minutes ago, so we're gonna wrap up and get out of here. But uh, anyway, I hope you like it, guys. That was the conclusion to my carrier can't breathe. And uh, after today, this carrier can breathe now. So hope you enjoyed the video, guys. 
hope you learned something. Um, and also, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate every everybody who watches these videos. Um, thanks for the comments. If you have any comments, feel free. I'm all about learning stuff, so feel free to leave me some comments. If you see something I'm doing wrong, maybe something I missed, if you have a better way for me to do something, let me know. Let me know. I'm humble enough to admit that uh, I'm still learning. I'm a student to the trades every day. All right, guys? So thanks for watching. Click uh, like and uh, also subscribe while you're at it. And we'll see you on the next one, all right?